This episode's FTR shout out goes to Bree Bree Pittman, Infinity Pets, and Llamas with Top Hats. Ah, you guys. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shout out in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Chris and you're watching Fish for Thought and welcome back to another Fish Tank Review. You. It's been a few weeks. Thank you to my sister Natalie and my friend Darren for hosting FTR while I was gone. You guys did such a good job. It's so good in fact that I guess y'all want them to replace me now, eh? All the comments are like, well, Natalie's gonna replace Chris now. You don't have to post FTR anymore, Chris. Bye. That's not hurtful at all. I'm not salty that you're fine when you're not really fine. Also, this is actually my second time recording this video because my first time through all 22 minutes were corrupted for some reason. So yeah, <laughs> there's that. Anyway, thank you guys for following my adventure in Japan and Korea. If you didn't know about it or you're new to the channel, please follow me up on Instagram. I post a lot of viewer submitted tanks by you and of course, whatever I'm up to if you want to get to know me more. Like squad is good to be back. Let's get this video to 1,200 likes to unlock next week's FTR. We might be a little rusty, but I believe in you guys. You got this. Due to a medical emergency, I had to leave my aquarium for one and a half months with no power or any maintenance. This is the sadness that I have to Return to. Well, Vishnu 132, that is really darn sad. I mean, you had a really, really good tank going on. That marvelous carpet, those textures of plants in the back, that is a really nice planted tank. It's probably got some CO2 injection in there as well. Very understocked. That's like the perfect 10 out of 10 tank for me. But unfortunately, I don't know what that medical emergency was, but unfortunately, you didn't have anyone to take care of your tank for you. And that's, yeah, that's really sad because even when I went away for two weeks, my mom was still taking care of my fish tanks so I'm very lucky in that way so I didn't have to come home to something like that. I mean there is one guppy in there that survived but probably not doing so well either. Haven't eaten in a while probably and because of the absence there were no lights because no power and the only plant that might survive this whole ordeal is that sword in the corner there. The wonderful carpet is gone. That is heartbreaking. That is one of like the nightmares for a aquarist or fish keeper. So if you have your stuff together again and and you've recovered or you're on the road to recovery and you've got a new tank going on please email me or you know let me know if you see this video if you know this person or know their whereabouts or whatever uh, let me know how to contact them I want to feature their stuff and maybe support them on social media that's a horrible way to lose a tank that is one of the saddest things to come home to that but the good news is if this person is home they're probably on the road to recovery so i'm glad that's the case hey want to pay 65 dollars to torture beta fish aquamid pyramid beta fish aquarium news 65 dollars i like that caption though they called out the beta just like i would call out the beta guess taking a lot of my stuff huh? i see you JK, it's not, it's not mine, it's not my stuff. It's just a general pet peeve of spotting things spelled the wrong way. But anyway, that looks like a tent uh, made for like an ant colony or something, I don't know. Definitely doesn't look like a fish tank to me. I don't know if, if you show anyone this, that the first thing they'll be like is, oh look, a fish tank. <laughs> also, what the hell is that in the back? Just, just what is that? <laughs> my sister would probably save that $65 to use it for something else. Nice, could add four more blue whales. <laughs> okay, you guys, <laughs> that's my sarcasm, give it back. <laughs> that cracks me up. <laughs> <It's more f> <laughs> could add four more blue whales. I love it, so sassy, man. You got this. <laughs> Doing my job, I don't, I, no comment, no comment, just, that's it. That's funny enough. Ashley and Michael Cassidy sent in this uh, Malawi cichlid assorted tank. I don't know that much about Malawi cichlids. Um, I do know that you can't put live plants in the tank because it'll just tear it up. But having said that, I think those are plastic plants. However, they are mimicking natural plants. They're green, they have natural plant textures. They definitely are a step above the violet purple neon glowing plants. I enjoy the hardscape as well. This is reminiscent of a typical Malawi cichlid tank. And to my understanding, it's kind of getting enough cichlids so that the aggression is spread out and not concentrated in a few fish. It's kind of like playing around with the ratios. I think you have the ratios down. None of the fish look like they're in great distress. So yeah, this is a Malawi cichlid tank done right. 
gonna give it a 3.8 out of 5. Good job. This fish tank is under my Cody plant, which if that's your real last name, hey man, that's really cool. And you're doing it justice. Look at how many plants are in this tank and you've kind of just let it go all wild and growing anywhere it wants. You got some classic plants in there like Vallis, Anubias, Hydrocado, I think that is. You got some moss and some glass jars, although not the biggest fan of glass jars. It doesn't look that, that bad. It kind of looks like a wild plant grow out tank. I would say it needs a bit more structure. Um, and again, the glass is not my cup of tea. So I'm giving this a four out of five. This next fish tank is sent in by M. Terrain. Looks like they've got some breeding action going on. And yes, those are mollies and guppies. So the breeder box is probably full of little fry right now. There's some white skirt tetras in here as well. Got the live plants splayed out across the tank. Uh, wait for it to fill out. It'll look even better. Got a fake wood piece and a fake little bridge there. Not the best in my opinion, but still going after something that is reminiscent of nature or something that's not completely and totally artificial. 3.9 out of 5 for now. Good job. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Where do I start with this one? That, I mean, that actually looks like an okay tank. It's got a hardscape centered and then it's got white substrate, which is nice. It shows off colors. And then it's got this clump of Anubius uh, Barteri, maybe Anubius Nana, which is perfectly fine. It, that's live plant right there. It's like a centerpiece kind of plant. I really enjoy it. But then you've got, you gotta have a blue lobster on there with a betta. I feel like you need to choose either or, even in a bigger tank. And I'm sure this tank is definitely not that big. And you can already see that the betta's fins are torn. That is probably because either the betta's been fighting the blue lobster and the blue lobster has been catching them, or it's just from, you know, sleeping at night. The betta goes down to the bottom to rest. And that's when the blue lobster like to scavenge around and look for food. <laughs> and that's probably also when it will catch the betta, you know, resting. This is a poor little betta here. Very beautiful too. It definitely needs to be alone. This is bad. Never do this. This fish tank is from Malachia from Italy. Hello, Italy. Would love to go someday. Very wary of your pit pocket people everywhere, but still worth it for me. Still want to go. Maybe it'll be my next trip. Who knows? I enjoy this scape a lot. It's got some depth in it. It's got that uh, driftwood in the back with that Anubia sticking out. That's a nice technique you got. You got forefront Java fern. Forefront, I think that's a little, maybe a little bit of Java fern too. And then um, Java fern in the back and more Anubias in the back. So pretty easy plans. You got some floaters up top to create some additional texture dropping down and a marvelous beta. The light is a bit overexposed, but hey, not everyone's a photographer, okay? I even accept the clay pot because it's kind of laid out in a nice uh, orientation. It's got a hole in it, looks kind of old. Looks like you could find this in nature if there's like a tribe living in the river. They might have dropped their clay pot in the river and it shattered. So really, this doesn't speak artificial to me at all. Got a nutritious substrate probably fluval stratum, something like that. I'm giving this a 4.3 out of 5. Really good job. Next tank, we have MD.Arifer Ramen Tushar. Sorry if I butchered that. I tried. Your tank is very interesting. This is a different take on a fish tank. And I love that there's an aspect where it comes out of the tank. It makes it just that much more natural. That's actually what I want to do with this tank over here. And there is a little piece of branch coming out of the water, but you can't really see it ever because it's blocked by the light. But anyways, I like the use of the pothos plant. I think that's what it is. Uh, really easy to grow and can be submerged, can be immersed. That's what's happening here. The roots are submerged and it's immersing up, growing up and using or climbing up the hardscape. Very, very smart move. Got some Elodia in there, got an almond leaf. Got some Amazonia frog bit. I love it. These are all really simple plants used in a very creative way. And it's also a clean, but somehow also messy look. This is a 4.6 out of five in my books. Good job. The way her face is magnified. <laughs> the heck is this? Um, it's like, uh, I review fish tanks here. This don't look like a fish tank to me. Thank you, next. This also doesn't, shouldn't be a fish tank, but $35 for a gallon, ideal for your betta. At least there's a filter, I guess. Wait a second, that's not even a betta. So you're saying that it's ideal for a betta, but you can also put a dwarf or flame gourami in there? I think not. One gallon, ideal. 
The next fish tank is sent in by The Fish Rack. I don't know if that's their YouTube or Instagram, but whichever the case, go check them out. Big, lovely tank, wooden finish. Very nice. Light substrate, got the big swords in the back, got two stumps um, on either side and centralized bit of uh, hardscape in the form of rocks. Very understocked, you got guppies and I see opaline garami, a centerpiece fish. It's very understocked, so for a big tank. Very enjoyable to look at. I do kind of feel like I want more plants in this tank. Hopefully you're still trying to spread the plants out, grow them more throughout the tank. Maybe some more prominent hardscape in the front as well. Just seems a little bit empty. Or if you can fill that emptiness with, you know, a few schools of bottom feeders like Corydoras, that would be great. For now, four out of five. Good job. Friends talked me into getting a beta spontaneously a couple years ago. Swim in peace. Oh, and that kind of reminds me of Phoenix, which was my recently deceased fish. Swim in peace as well. Two years is a long time. Any one day of those two years and you could have done enough research to know exactly how to take care of this beautiful little female betta. But again, there's a lot of people who get bettas and they don't survive for more than two days or two months. The lesson here is don't give in to peer pressure. <laughs> Something's wrong, but I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> you don't say. First ever bubble ball aquarium, fish inside. Like that's supposed to be a good thing. Oh, it's from Barb's Buzzin. Now, uh, truth be told, I haven't seen any, I haven't checked out any channels like Barb's Buzzin or Poca Faro or uh, that other fish torture <laughs> channel. I've only seen it on the subreddits. Um, like I've only seen people post about them in the subreddits. Like what's the next horrible thing they've been doing? Partly because I don't want to get more depressed by them. And also because I do, uh, I, I have seen you guys recommend me to do some breakdown on their channel or review their channel. And I haven't gone to that yet, but I want my reaction to be like first time reaction. So it's genuine. So I don't want to check them out beforehand. And if you guys really want me to, uh, you know, review them quicker, sooner, then please let me know in the comments. I'll try to prioritize that if I see a lot of you that want that. No promises though. I do have a lot of other things that I want to post, a lot of more exciting videos. But anyways, yeah, just let me know. This person is just stressing out the fish by just stomping around. This person really thinks this is an okay thing to do just to stress out the fish. It just exists to be entertainment however you want. The scary part is why, look at that like to dislike ratio. That's crazy. Only 136 people disliked it from the 74K that saw this. Why am I suddenly feeling like I'm being ridiculous pointing this out? I shouldn't feel like I'm in the wrong. It shouldn't be like, wait, you haven't put fish in a bubble ball and stomped all over them yet? What kind of human being are you? Do that. Go get a bubble ball, whatever that is, tomorrow and put fish in there. You're so inhumane that you haven't treated fish this way yet. Like how, how weird does that sound? That's how I feel right now with this like and dislike ratio on this video. It's like we're the minority, the ones that actually care about living things. Wheel underscore master underscore three, four, five cent in this tank. It's got some big river rocks. I've done a similar scape to this. If you guys remember, I think it's been a year since that scape. It was really fun to work with larger substrates. It's very different from having to uh, manage the very fine, thin, uh, sandy, loamy, silty substrate. I had a blast aquascaping that tank, but this does remind me of that tank. It's understocked. It's got some typical river uh, scape plants, plants that look like valids, plants that are more simple like the moss. The scape is also quite simple. It's nice. The only thing is I feel like maybe it shouldn't be under direct sunlight because then you don't have full control of what you can do with the tank or algae. But seeing how there isn't a massive algae bloom here, they must know kind of what they're doing at least. 4.5 out of 5. Good job. The first two days of owning goldfish. Oh no. Well, and there's that SpongeBob house, of course. But here's the good news. The same person who posted that picture posted this and said, T after two days, I informed myself a lot and updated my tank. I think that says, that's supposed to say tank, to a 100 gallon tank and a good filter for them. Congrats, Silv97, you're doing it right. I mean, you figured out that you're doing something wrong and you corrected it. And imagine 100 gallons for those two goldfish. They're living it up in a huge palace. That is way beyond what you are required to provide them. Good on you, man. 
That's five out of five behavior right there. Thank you to everyone who watched to the end of this video. Thank you for those who are watching, who are supporting me on Patreon, who are new subscribers, who are O time subscribers. Just like every other YouTuber on this platform, I cannot be doing any of this without you. And you are the biggest reason why I'm doing this in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, if it gave you a laugh, please hit that like button and subscribe. There will be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.